The Mental Out manga sure has been cooking some spicy new lore regarding the previous generation of level 5 espers. Specifically the esper who was ranked number 1 before Accelerator. In this video I'll be talking about everything we know so far about the former number 1 who is now split up into two cubes of shadow metal and my theories regarding espers and the imaginary number school district. In chapter 17 of the manga we find out some of the backstory of the unnamed number 1 esper who we will call a cube from now on for convenience and their OP ability known as Synthesize Grid. Despite the cube's amnesia about their past while they had a human form, they were seemingly attacked and remember their body bursting. In addition to two figures, Alistair Crowley and his personal assassin for extraordinary threats to Academy City and top doggo Kihara Noken. Meaning it is possible that Alistair decided to kill the former number one for an unknown reason. Maybe Alistair thought they were too dangerous or was simply not needed anymore in his plan. What is interesting though is that Alistair appears with his blasting rod, which we saw in World War 3, implying that Alistair may have sent another version of himself to kill the number one directly with Noken at his side. The strange thing is that in the lore, if Alistair does fax a version of himself outside the tube, then it can be detected by Laura Stewart to confirm Alistair Crowley the Magician is still alive, which happened at the end of Index Season 3. And a spiritual item which can detect Alistair's life force or mana seemingly spans the entire world, as Alistair was detected in Russia while Laura was in England. So while it is cool and all to get an Alistair cameo in Mental Out, I really hope to god it doesn't contradict the lore and cause plot holes. After the former number one died, they recall that they wandered the sky of the city for a long time and devoured the supernatural as they did, until a clash of two great supernatural forms produced shadow metal, which allowed the number one to be reborn in a cubic shard of the mysterious substance. The cube also reveals its twin uses the same power and that the former number one was in fact split into two cubes when they were resurrected. The former Former number one believes that their power also allowed this miracle to happen. Synthesized Grid's power controls Mimosa, small metal nanoparticles which you may have heard of as they were used by the professor from the battle royale arc where he tried to use them to kill Kakina. Except the Synthesized Grid version seems to have Mimosa on steroids as they are a vast improvement. Anything in the range of the Mimosa which covers the space near the user become bonded, entering any and all forms of matter and being able to transform and control them with nothing being immune. Even Esper powers are no exception. Not even something beyond the world's laws can escape it apparently and from the way it's worded it can also create shadow metal unless I'm reading it wrong. The cube was not sure why a dimension was seemingly opened during its clash with the other cube in the previous chapters and that the goal of its evil twin is to somehow restore its past self and get its revenge. Okay first, let's discuss that ability because goddamn, wow. it sounds OP as hell. It may actually be stronger than Accelerator's vector control, at least on paper, as clearly we haven't seen enough of Synthesized Grid to know the full extent of it, as we have seen it being able to take over other Esper powers with it stated to affect things beyond the laws of the world. Then I think that's actually confirmation that the grid may be able to influence dark matter, but it could turn into a tug of war between the cube and Kakina for control. But would it be able to counter Accelerator's invisible vector shield? If it can, I think it would make Synthesized Grid a prime contender for the most powerful Esper ability in the entire Toaru franchise. If it functions by being able to affect AIM fields, which I do have a theory about, then it could potentially infect Accelerator's shield and possibly disable it, allowing him to be hit. Alternatively, if I'm to play Devil's Advocate, Mimosa have vectors, so you could argue that these nanobot particles will be reflected away before they could take over the shield, which makes things a lot more complicated. Let me know down below how you think the fight would go down. Who would win, the cube or Accelerator? Also, 
so you should definitely subscribe if you want to stay up to date with any news regarding the previous level 5s, as I'll definitely make videos when we get more info. What I find even more interesting about the cube is that somehow, after losing their body and seemingly dying, they were reincarnated into Shadow Metal. And I can already feel the Isekai web novelist taking notes from this. And yes, I have a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory about how the former number one was able to do this. So the fact they mentioned that they wandered the sky of the city after death, and the clash with its twin caused a dimension to briefly be revealed, I have come to a conclusion. This has to be the imaginary number school district, aka the city of Shimmers, which acts as a sort of parallel dimension contained to Academy City only, and formed by the many AIM fields of the espers that dwell in the city. I believe this sky of the city actually references the dimension itself, and that somehow the imaginary number school district absorbs the personal realities of deceased espers. A bold claim, I know, but let me cook. This is not even the first time we have seen an espers power be used after their death with the most notorious example being the coffins from a certain scientific accelerator, where the bodies of dead espers were placed into mechas, which somehow were able to use their ability, which they had when they were alive, but boosted even stronger by the machine. It always made me wonder though, how could a corpse with an inactive dead brain be even able to manifest and sustain a personal reality, which is a requirement to have an esper power? And I suppose the cube may have our answer. Another instance of this occurs in New Testament, so skip here if you don't want to be spoiled beyond Index Season 3. Kikina's body was almost entirely destroyed by a berserk accelerator, with the machine known as Dark Legacy somehow keeping his brain alive, which then allowed him to rebuild his entire body with dark matter. But when Accelerator and Mugano were killing Kakina clones left, right and centre without a trace, it is almost guaranteed that they destroyed his biological brain before he kept replacing it with a dark matter one. And yet this made no difference. Even without a brain of any kind, Kakina's personal reality would somehow still exist. As long as a single atom of dark matter was still there, he would be able to fully regenerate. One passage in particular from New Testament 6 grabs my attention. Academy City had espers who could transform their appearance, but this went well beyond that. Was his brain creating his powers, or were his powers preserving their existence by creating his brain? Was he alive or dead? Was this a dream or reality? This implies Kakina was somehow between life and death itself, and yet had no problems with using his ability to a potential that surpassed himself even when he had his natural body. Therefore, I believe Kakina's personal reality may have been supported by the imaginary number school district itself, as the former number one Esper was also able to recreate a physical body, albeit a cube by the Shadow Metal in Railgun T, after their body was destroyed. It makes perfect sense to me. Now, this may even extend to the personal realities of the espers that are still alive, as they are the ones who support its existence with the AIM feels. Remember how Motuharu questioned Alistair about the true nature of the imaginary number school district? He said, Are you trying to recreate an artificial heaven? With the dimensions seemingly supporting espers who have either lost their bodies or are deceased, could the imaginary number school district be a heaven for the souls of espers, with the true nature of their souls being their personal realities. And if you remember, there are many strange inhabitants that dwell in the dimension which Kazakiri Hyoka can influence to an extent, but cannot interact with fully. What if these strange ghost-like people are actually the personal realities of deceased espers in the city, and that is why they are stored and act as scientific souls, guarded by an angel in the form of Kazakiri. Honestly, I think my theories can be kind of stupid at times, but somehow I feel confident about this one, and I find it so intriguing. I'm sure more answers will reveal themselves soon anyway. Let me know your thoughts about my theory and synthesized grid. Do you think I'm completely right, or am I off the mark? And if you want to learn more about the current gen of level 5 espers, click on these videos on screen right now.